I will continually take a drug test every month. Continually take a drug test every month. What's up guys, Derek from our .com. Today we are going to be talking about Teron Beckham again. So if you guys saw my video on November 1st, you'll know I posted a video called Teron Beckham naturally benches more than the world record, natty or not. And this was a highly requested topic that people have been asking me for a while. So I got around to it and there was a good response to the video. He actually commented on it himself and I pinned the comment. He basically just said, uh, <laughs> Thanks for this, I appreciate it. Out of everyone, you went at this the best way, even though you don't agree with me. When I made the natural video, I did not have much knowledge on gear, so I said some pretty dumb things. More and more, I realize I'm just not gonna win this battle. I feel I've made a more than reasonable natural development over the years, you have to think. I've been training since a kid from football, basketball, and track almost a year round. Um, in t every year in Texas, born and raised, that's how we are down. That's how we are down there, and there are more like me that don't do social media to show. But a lot of people don't understand I was developed a lot earlier than the majority of people, which has led to how I am now. How many people can say they have been doing some type of fitness training consistently before becoming a teenager? But I will leave it at that. No hate here, G O love. And then uh, like that was a you know like a super polite response to somebody basically calling him out. And um, I was like, like wow, you know, very surprising and uh, very humble sounding dude. Uh, a couple of days later, or actually the next day, he ends up posting on Instagram and he basically shows him at 19 years old at 205 pounds and then him at 235 at 28 years old, which is current. And he says in the caption, I'll never understand why this is unnatural. It's not like I'm big and ripped, but, but, but okay. It's like the fitness industry, like fucked up perception of what is big and shredded is maybe different than what yours is. It's like, yeah, when you're comparing yourself to Mike O'Hearn, maybe you're not big and ripped. Okay. It's honestly tough not being quiet about it just because I am so annoyed with the fact that people are calling me an all out liar. Me training with no natural lifters as an excuse to say, oh, he for sure isn't natural is the dumbest shit ever. I've been around the same weight for years. I've lifted the same weight for years. I wasn't, by the way, I wasn't saying that you're around unnatural lifters being, um, implying you're unnatural. It's more saying that you're hanging even whatsoever with their lifts. That was the whole point. Like the amount of poundage and the amount of reps that are being done, you are like in the same stratosphere as the guys who are genetic phenoms and saucing their brains out. That was the only, it didn't matter that you were training with them. That had nothing to do with the implication of you being on gear or not. It was like literally that your performance is like within the same realm of what they're doing. So um anyways i've been around the same weight for years i've lifted the same weight for years i've literally been stagnant for years so if i was on gear why wouldn't i just up the dose get hell of using all my lifts and pr all the time oh that's right because i don't take anything to all the people out here out there who built themselves up naturally and have been continuously cursed out and shamed on it i'm with you it's a tough life that people don't want to accept the truth and rather believe a lie so you know, like, that's fine. He's entitled to, like, not be happy with people calling him out, obviously, because if he is, in fact, natural, I can see, uh, like, I would think you would just take it as a compliment. I'd be overwhelmingly flattered if somebody thought I was undoubtedly on gear and I wasn't and I knew it. So, anyways, follow up to that. Greg ended up posting his own video November 9th. And obviously, you know, Greg, bigger channel than mine, gets a bit more attention from Tehran. Tehran jumps on the, you know, response train at that point. And, um, you know, Greg basically is in line with my opinions in terms of the same kind of stance we had with his lifts, with his body composition, historical, just the way he has been performing historically and whatnot. And then Tehran comes back and I didn't even really want to involve myself in this response because Tehran was just responding to Greg. Like I was actually barely even brought up after that initial video, but people have been tagging me and tagging me and telling me, yo, you know, he posted this and he posted that. You got to respond. And I'll get to why I'm responding to begin with at the end. So anyways, Tehran responds to Greg and he has a, the, th <laughs> the thumbnail <laughs> is, uh, that's a dig. So 40, 41 minute response to Greg and I'm pretty sure this is just like him like watching through the full thing and then stopping and responding and that's why it's so long. Uh, I'm not going to sit through it but you guys have probably already seen it if you're here. 
Um, if you haven't watched it and you want to like see the whole story, you know, check out Tehran's channel. Um, Greg ends up doing a follow up to that response where he goes over, does uh, calibrated kilogram plates, does it matter? Um, kind of going over the stuff that uh, Tehran said and whatnot. And, um, you know, basically just like reiterating the same kind of thing and saying how if you want to, uh, you know, like prove yourself like go in a randomly drug tested IPF meet and show that you can break the world record without, you know, popping at the same time, like simultaneously go break a world record like we have seen you're probably capable of and um, do it naturally without uh, popping on a drug test randomly because you will indeed get randomly drug tested through that league. At least that is what appears to be the case based on their uh, high level of, uh, I don't know, like they're probably the most well accredited um, federation there is as far as natural powerlifting goes, as far as I know. So moving forward, the same day, Tehran comes back, the aftermath, Savage Greg Doucette response to responsive response. <laughs> Savage, some of the back and forth. Uh, that's actually hilarious. The response... <laughs> Aftermath Savage Greg set response <laughs> to response <laughs> of response. Uh, that's funny. Some of this stuff is like you can't even keep track. It's like, uh, um, what's that movie? It's uh, how am I not remembering this? Leonardo DiCaprio. It's like the dream movie. Oh my fucking god! How am I not remembering the name of this movie? Inception. That's what it was called, Inception. I, I don't know how that slipped my mind to such a degree, but that movie, you know, where you're like in a dream, in a dream, <laughs> in a dream that's of a dream, like, uh, and you just go like different levels deep. Like that's what the, that's what the YouTube uh, response, the response train pretty much is. Response to response to response. So after that, he does a final follow-up where he basically says, my last response to Greg Doucette is getting tested. So this is where I sort of circle back into the picture because he's talking about getting tested at this point. So this is like, I am the scientific dissection guy of all of the, you know, like uh, professional sports um, drug test results and the parameters they go about doing them and kind of uh, how random they are, how to circumvent them. Um, what kind of loopholes they have available for athletes to leverage, to take advantage of, all the different vectors of performance enhancement that can be um, pretty much just abused currently in many different professional leagues. So when he's talking about drug testing like this, obviously, you know, my attention is now peaked again and all the tags make me actually feel like I'm justified to jump back into this here. So I'm going to be kind of like talking about uh, what he says he's going to do and then give my response to if there's even any viability to what he says he's gonna do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, make my YouTube videos, make progress, try to get, you know, as strong as possible as I can. Now, mind you, I do have a back injury, so therefore, I don't know what my deadlift will be, but I will be benching heavy, and I will be trying to see where I can get with my squat. I'm not sure about deadlifts, but I'm working with a chiropractor to try to get my back situated and straight. I still have a little bit of pain around my sciatic nerve uh, over here on the uh, IT band as well. So that being said, for these next couple of weeks or whatever, I'm just gonna try as strong, get, get as strong as possible these next couple of weeks. And on the day, I am going to post on the day of my of when I whenever I max out, whatever I do, I am going to go and get drug test i'm going to get drug tested on that day right I'm, I'm going to film everything on that same day i'll make sure i have a newspaper or something to show you the exact date that i did everything and i'm going to get, get drug tested on that day and i'm going to show you the results okay so like i don't know if he thinks the viewers are stupid or if he just doesn't actually like i guess this is not common knowledge so how could i just like assume such so something is obvious like I am about to elaborate on. So basically he says he's not going to get drug or he is going to get drug tested on the day that he's maxing out. So does you being drug free on the day of a lift indicate that you were not using performance enhancing drugs for the entire time prior? Even if it was cleared out of your system, would you not retain some of that benefit for weeks or months or potentially even years moving forward? Obviously, like 
I, like, no one needs to fucking say that. Like, obviously, there's a reason why UFC fighters will be showing up and getting a fucking blood test serum showing a hypogonadal total testosterone level. And it's definitely not because they actually are walking around with a 59 nanogram per deciliter total T. Rather, it's because they're suppressed as fuck because they just had something exogenous in their system. Like, there's a reason why guys are able to get away with what they get away with and sometimes it is just a matter of clearing a compound out of your system and then even if you lose a bit of the performance enhancing benefit of it it's still above baseline so you know like this doesn't really mean shit um but i'll let him continue now even further if my views go up if i'm making progress and programs coach whatever i will continually take a drug test every month continually take a drug test every month if we continually if my fan base actually continually grows and my business everything is going because this is the thing I'm not gonna just do this just to you know what I'm saying just for free I'm, I'm not honestly not the first ones for free after that if you want me to continually do it to continually prove myself then I have requirements that need to be met I'm just not about to just do this freely and waste 200 300 dollars whatever uh, every every test I have to do. Okay, so I can tell you right now, I like the idea that he sort of has here, but unfortunately, him regulating it himself, obviously no one's gonna believe it. Even if you're paying for it, like everyone's just gonna think you've doctored it, you've got your friends fucking piss instead of yours. You know, a myriad of different reasons that would just make this a total colossal waste of time. So I would not really go about it at all, unless you had basically had somebody unbiased like I don't know, Greg or myself or something to literally like randomly drug test you on a continual basis for like the next fucking couple of years, like realistically. Um, and you have to keep in mind too, the actual cost of getting a thorough panel done to actually see exactly what's going on is going to exceed a few hundred dollars, a hundred percent. Even if you got a very basic screening panel using gas chromatography with mass spectrometry for synthetic anabolics, um, or SARMs, you're not gonna be able to even see if you're using super physiological amounts of testosterone because we can circumvent that through the abuse of the testosterone to epitestosterone ratio that is going to be on these stupid IOC cutoffs that they have in every single professional sports league. So, and then above, like, I, I'm probably already speaking to a, like, I don't think he even thinks of this shit. I don't know. Like, is he thinking that far ahead? I'm not really sure. And then above and beyond that, isotopic ratio mass spectrometry would need to be deployed to make sure you're not using synthetic testosterone to kind of just leverage the T to EPT ratio abuse area that you could otherwise leverage. And then above and beyond that too, I'd actually need to see your endocrine parameters simultaneously. What's your total T during that time? What's your free T during that time? What is your What's your lipid panel even? What's your SHBG? I'd be looking at like downstream metabolites of weird things that would be out of balance that would not be in somebody with natural production that is just high or somebody who had otherwise cleared the compounds of their system for the test. Um, and then at the end of the day, even if I did all that, even if somebody did all that randomly, which no one's gonna do, you could still find a way to get around it just by microdosing and by figuring out how to plan the pharmacokinetic profile of whatever you're using and making sure that you're leveraging it in a time frame that is reasonable enough within a certain dosage parameter to make sure you're going to be within the cutoff even if you're somebody randomly showed up at your door you would have a short enough active life of the compound you'd make sure it's bioidentical you'd make sure it not pop on some sort of bullshit ratio and you would make sure that you can get around it regardless of who shows up at your door randomly so no Dude, save your money because no one's going to believe it. Even if you're if you're doing it yourself, people are just going to say, oh, you use your friend's piss or no, like uh, you're you, you doctored the results, blah, blah, blah. Like even recently I did uh, an analysis of Thomas DeLauer's blood work where he literally went to a lab, <laughs> got the blood test done, sent me the results. He literally screen recorded him logging into the uh, lab database to show me his results. And like no one's gonna believe it still because I wasn't literally there watching him take, get his blood drawn. People, like there's so many things that could go wrong. And above and beyond that, there's still ways he could have tweaked his hormone profile if he really wanted to fake it. Um, he could have. And, but you know, obviously in that video, this is sort of getting off on a tangent here, but basically in that video is more so, I kind of, you know, grilled him on the questions that needed to be asked and then used the rest of the video to educate um, the audience with him about, you know, endocrinology and kind of like hormonal imbalances and deficiencies and dietary 
um, methodologies and whatnot. But anyways, getting back to this, like there's going to be ways to get around this and just like testing yourself once a month, spending your own money on it. Like no one's gonna even believe, even if you got a thorough test, people are just gonna be like, oh, you used your friend sample. Oh, you fucking edited it. Oh, blah, blah, blah. So like save your money, dude. Like even if you got it properly done and randomly tested, like there's still ways to get around it. Like, trust me, like there's no, even if you were the only, the closest thing you're gonna get is if you compete in a randomly tested sport and then above and beyond that, you actually had somebody dissect those results. Like that's, and you like simultaneously maintain your lifts at the same time. Like just getting yourself tested on your own through your own, you know, we just gotta trust that it's gonna be fine. Like that's not gonna work. And even I highly doubt you're going to get the test that you would need to get done to get a full spectrum panel done anyways. So if we can do that and we can agree to that, then I'm with it. I am 100% with it. I'm going to figure this shit out. This is my actual reaction. For the other video, honestly, I needed something up that was funny or whatever. I just had fun with that last video just because I needed time to do my little research and figure out a plan to actually shut everybody up. So all, all you little trolls and haters, take note of this, all right? You want to dislike this video? Go ahead. Y'all done armied up and disliked the other two videos and still trying to pass my uh, my likes on those videos. So here's my actual answer to Greg Duchetti and everybody else that's trying to make a Natty or Not video about me. So please continue to make more because I, I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually shutting all of you down. I'm looking very forward to shutting all of you down and understand that yes, this is my genetics and I do this easily. It, yeah. I've already done the hard work. I've already done the hard work to get where I am. Now I'm in a maintenance stage. It's easy for me now. It's easy for me to be strong. I've always been somewhat strong, but I'm just really sick and tired of answer to everybody for this situation. I was wrong. Apologies, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Because, yo, I don't even know, I don't, I don't even know what to say after that, bro. I really don't. Cause it's just so it's just so funny to me, bro. Cause all the people that I just know sitting here in the comments, the people that I went to high school with that I haven't talked to for years. Okay, so basically, you know, he's trying to reinforce his natural status, which is fine. Like, you know, if he in fact is, like I can see why it'd be annoying. I would again, I would circle back to it just being extremely flattering that no one believes you. You know, take it and fucking run with it. That's what, that's what would make the most sense in my opinion, because um like let's see what the comment section is okay let's see a message to all i and greg are actually cool if you don't know about all of this i am not triggered by y'all who think i'm on gear i am triggered by not having the actual facts about me that are out there from why i didn't make w make nfl or wwe saying it's because i was scared to get caught on gear which is total bs i don't know if i don't know who said that it definitely wasn't me um, I have worked hard to go after my dream. Don't lowball me and give me give the reason for failing at the moment for drug use when you don't take the time to understand my story. I don't know why anyone would say that because it's like it's like a prerequisite to be in the fucking NFL or WWE. I would think um, at least the WWE. And if you think people in the NFL aren't getting away with shit, then you're fucking oblivious. And I've touched on that briefly in some of my older videos about. Uh, I think I touched on. Uh, Edelman at one point I forgot who it was that I was touching on his uh positive test result and how it was just completely fucking brushed over but for anyone to say you were afraid of getting caught and that's why you didn't make the WWE or NFL like that's just ridiculous for sure so I would you know back him up on that um let's see Greg commented this sounds fun I want this drug test too I'm not natty I'll take 20 things and see what the results are thing with test art needs to be done in an IOC accredited lab. Yes, it's very expensive. Yes, well over a thousand dollars. They literally have somebody come over and watch you pee. All you have to do is enter the IPF powerlifting meet and get tested. And when you pass, I'll make a video saying I'm wrong. Now remember some drug tests don't even test for SARM. So be sure to get the right test. But yes, if you get tested every month, you're for sure going to get more views and followers. And how can any, how can people argue against you if you're constantly passing drug tests? Legit, you would win. Um, 
Oh shit, this sounds very good. Consult with Derek to do a video where he breaks down your panel. Do an endocrine panel with FSH, LH, estrogen, etc. with your drug test. If other hormones are in line, not just testosterone, it will prove your natural. Okay, so I can tell you guys right now, even if you went down to the degree of getting GCMS testing for SARMs, as well as every synthetic anabolic there is under the sun, as well as getting the uh, carbon isotope ratio test, as well as showing his endocrine parameters, there's still a way to circumvent it. And I've detailed this in some of my videos before, but would I think he'd go that far? No, I don't. So if he actually, I would, you know, reinforce the same thing Greg said, enter the IP of powerlifting. Like I thought this was already covered sufficiently in the first videos. It's like, go to the powerlifting thing, break the fucking world record for your weight class, get randomly drug tested and um, yeah. And make sure it is done via like an unbiased, like third party who is a part of uh, the testing parameters and whatnot. Um, only problem is, is are they going to, by default, carbon isotope ratio test you as well as provide your endocrine parameters for us to, uh, you know, dissect? I, I don't know, but um, that would be the way to do it for sure is uh, enter the IPF powerlifting mean, break the world record, show us the GCMS results for all of the uh, synthetic anabolics as well as the synthetic um, androgen receptor modulators and whatnot. Um, then also show us your carbon isotope ratio results to make sure there's no plant tissue derived fucking Mexican yam testosterone in your system. Um, I'm going to assume you don't have access to cholesterol derived testosterone. So we'll just like give you a pass on that one, even if you do clear this. And then let me look at your endocrinology parameters at the same time, as well as the rest of your elaborate blood work at all simultaneously performed. And then we will see at that point. And that would, the thing is though, is even then people are going to be like, oh, well you just cleared out of your system in time. Cause it's just a snapshot in time when you see that. But it's at that point, you're kind of just like, you know, you gotta sort of give them a benefit of the doubt, I guess. I don't know, but um, at least it, it would be random. Um, is the IPF powerlifting meet random? I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Actually, I'd have to, uh, go see for the exact competition he would be entering um, to make sure of that. Because that would be one of the uh, main stipulations, obviously, that it would have to be random by somebody unbiased in the, uh, a part of the organization or else it would kind of, uh, at least that would be the only way to avoid needing to like test this guy like on a fucking weekly basis to make sure it's actually accurate. So that's, that's the way to do it. In my opinion, like I can't, I can't think of a better way. Like either way, if I really wanted to like dig into it and dissect it, there's a way to make it seem like no matter what, like the, any, you have to think at the very top level, not just like natty or not discussion at a very top level in the UFC, in the NFL, in a bunch of different leagues, there are guys getting away with stuff with actual high paid million dollar, multiple million dollar companies that are literally designed to catch these guys cheating or, you know, so we maybe, maybe not. Um, but they do in fact pop some guys who don't, uh, you know, figure out how to circumvent the, uh, the uh, obstacles put up that are things you can actually get around potentially, but either way, people are getting caught by people who were literally their only job is to catch these people. And then we're just talking about like a simple natty or not discussion here. Like there has to be some sort of like, I don't know, has to be like pretty fucking strict in terms of if we're going to actually go down that road and kind of compare it to something like that. Like you got to actually put yourself in a position where you're going to be randomly drug tested with some sort of elaborate testing. And it's not going to be done yourself. It's going to be done by an accredited organization. And you're simultaneously trying to work up to some peak performance metrics, ideally that otherwise reflect what you are, you know, performing on a regular basis, but while simultaneously at least being natural for a snapshot in time, you're not really going to get better than that. So I would, you know, I would reinforce what Greg said, open, enter the uh, IPF powerlifting meet and get tested. And let's, uh, you know, the follow-up video will be interesting from that. It'll definitely get you views for sure. This is like an interesting, uh, you'd be like the road to the fucking natural world record. I don't know, like whatever it is, get you tons of hype, dude. It's like, I don't, I don't know if you actually care, but I mean, um, that, I think that'd be a cool series. And you'd be like one of the only ones who's like actively like exposing your, your uh, natural progression and like showing, you know, the uh, ins and outs of uh, getting drug tested and whatnot on a regular basis and uh, trying to prove, uh, you know, what is going on and what is uh, natural versus not versus everyone else is hiding behind, uh, hiding behind the scenes because they're, you know, trying to get around the fucking test. So if you're not, then I think that'd make a good series. No one's really doing something transparent like that. So 
because a lot of guys aren't actually natural. They're actually trying to cheat. So no one would fucking go out of their way to do shit like that. So um, let's see, dude. Like you might as well. You know, there's always going to be a way to uh, spin it and kind of dissect it further. Like I said, at the top level, if guys in the UFC are getting away with it, with the strictness of their testing, obviously you can get away with it at an IPF powerlifting meet, in my opinion. But, you know, we can only get so far with it. So anyways, I, I recommend doing that. And I think it would uh, help reinforce your case at least. But one thing I do want to say, though, before we sign off here is I didn't actually realize people were, you know, claiming this guy didn't make the NFL or WWE because he's scared of getting caught on gear like that. I already said it once. but I'll say it again. Like, that makes no sense, guys. Like, it's the, the drug drug use is still in those it sports, you know, NFL and WWE, if you want to call WWE a sport. Drug use is still a part of the world, like in sports. It's not something that you would not join because you're afraid of getting caught. Like that is definitely not the reason. And I think anybody who has uh, any kind of grasp of what um, actually goes on with these drug tests and as well as uh, what kind of uh, protocols are used for performance enhancement would kind of get the idea that that's definitely not the case. So. Um, anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. Check out uh, Tehran's page um, if he ends up making a um, series or something. I'm sure it'd be cool to watch. Um, and uh, yeah, anything, anything I'm associated with, you can support in the video description below. Um, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.